Hello, I'm Peter, I'm co-founder and CEO of X8. Hi, I'm Sonal, I'm the, one of the co-founders and the CTO for X8. Uh, I just need to figure out how to make the clicker work. I think that's, that's it. Great, there you go, that's us. So before we started X8, actually my career is not in IT, it's in banking. So we worked together for many years at a large uh, global bank, and every problem that we had had to do with data. How do you move data? How do you share data? How do you do anything with respect to data? It was the bane of our existence, to be completely fair. Um, on the back of that, we left our corporate career to become a startup to basically solve the problems around the how could we become the secure exchange of data. That's our goal, and that's what we're looking to do. And that's the company that we have built on the back of that. When you look at the, with respect to data and how it moves, it's a big issue with respect to data and data moving. It's, you look at the regulation, you look at everything going on in the market right now, it, everything is pointing to how do you protect your data, and how do you protect your data flowing in motion through APIs. When you look at APIs, and you look at COVID and everything that happened, the world has become basically API driven. That, that's the way the world is, has, has moved. But you look at APIs, how many breaches do you have with respect to APIs? A lot. You have 91% of companies have had a breach with respect to an API, and 85% have had multiple. So this is a problem that you have to deal with and you have to address before you, you get absolutely crushed. Um, when you look at the world and the macro conditions today, you have 87% um, of people, say 80% of people, of countries, apologies, <laughs> very small font here, 80% uh, of countries, two thirds of the world population will be governed by data protection regulation coming up very quickly. That's a lot of people. And you look at the digital risk, as I said, you have digital transformation, everything is now API driven. Nothing is data at rest is, is passe nowadays, everything is data in motion, and 87% of people will not do business with a company that they don't trust their data is protected. That's a lot of people, and it's, it's a big issue. So what you're finding now is this is becoming a board level issue, because when you have 87% of your potential customer base not wanting to deal with you, or you look at if you have a data breach, what does your share price do? It's down about 7%. That's a board level issue, and people care about that. So now when you look at, when we talk about regulation, and this is, it started in Europe, so we're based out of London, typically, um, and you have GDPR, you have SHRIMS too, you have all these different regulations. But in the US now, you have different states putting in different regulations. You have the government, central government, looking at different regulations. You have gram leach Billy Act, you have HIPAA, you have all these different regulations. And you look at the different states now that have data privacy regulation, and every state is different. So when you look at this, how do you now have the ability to automate every single state's regulation? How do you have the ability to automate a federal regulation? How do you have the ability to look at global regulations? Every country has different rules. The way you have to protect these, if you don't automate it, you're, you're just gonna be running around trying to fix every single problem. This one, I always struggle with this one when I'm in uh, Europe because people, Weikert, who's Weikert? But I, this is finally the chance that I have here where people will have heard of Weikert. <laughs> so when you look at Weikert Realty, they had a data breach. Um, they were fined 1.2 million. Okay, fine, it's not a massive amount of money, but for an SME, it's, it's a lot of money. But the real key thing here is when you look at the New Jersey Attorney General, this is the law. He makes it very clear. You are expected to protect your data. It's the law. If you don't do it, we're gonna come after you and we're gonna find you. So this is exactly where we sit as a company, is to help you do this, to help you protect your data. One other one that we have that I think is, to me, fascinating, um, you look at Twitter. Twitter was fined $150 million. Why? Two-factor authentication. They stored your phone number. But, and I, hopefully you can all see this happening as much as I can, someone found the phone numbers for two-factor authentication in a database somewhere. And they decided, wow, I have a great idea. Let's go market to these people. We have their phone number. Yeah, no, that's illegal. You can't do that. So when you look at it, it's not just saying you have the data stored, but it's the purpose of use. So you have the data stored, which is fantastic, 
but in reality, you have to only use it for the reason that people gave you the data. And I think this is the poster child. Of, it's so obvious how you can see this happening. Someone finds a phone number and uses it for the wrong purpose. So on the back of that, I will hand over to Sonal to talk about the technical bit of it. Okay, thanks, Peter. So knowing how quickly we've had to cope with COVID, and it's pretty much been like dog years, the way that transformation has actually hit us. The demand for data is just growing. We know that. We're creating more of it. We want to use more of it. But these regulations are kind of hindering it a little bit. But what we're trying to do is protect people. Protect. Uh, you know, it's, it's almost worth looking at why do we want to do these things. So in financial in industry, if you look at wealth, for example, you'll have certain countries that they, they want to be completely protected. Where they just don't want people to know that they bank with a private bank. The consequences? your kids might get kidnapped. You might have, there, there'll be good reasons behind it why you want that privacy, but it's a fundamental human right. But what we're trying to do here is, like, while we're trying to create data, while we're trying to create these points where we can access data, we need to understand the governance behind it. So who's accessing it? Why are they accessing it? What's the purpose of use? As Peter mentioned with the Twitter example, we know that you can't be using information that's not, you, you've not been permission to give it, to use it for that purpose. Um, we want to make our API programs scalable. But how do we do it without exposing our, our company to much more risk? So we, we are looking at this, that risk-based approach on, you know, that, that privacy versus utility on how we're going to use that information. But we have to make sure that we're compliant. That governance is going to be a key part of any API program. Are we compliant? Are we meeting global regulation? Are we meeting local regulation? Actually, are we even using it in an ethical manner? You know, it, these are things that we should be thinking about as organizations on how do we actually like, monetize data, but at the same time, do it in an ethical manner. And this is one of my favorites because I, working in large organizations, API programs, that the amount of APIs that get generated, it's phenomenal. We know that we're creating many of them, but they're replicas. We're doing it to deal with different needs on data. What are you using your information for? So a customer object, you start off with a, a normal customer object, and you want to give all of that information. Now you've got, you need to use it for something else. What, what are we going to do? We're going to create another one. So customer A. Then we're going to create customer B. Now you've got this plethora of these customer APIs. And you can start seeing that this is now exposing you to a little bit more risk than you'd had before. It was nice and neat when you had one. Now you've got many. So how do we actually create these security patterns and these governance patterns into our architecture before starting these programs? And you know, we'll cover some of these things that what I wished we had done when we were in our corporate career and some of the things that we're looking to address as a company too. So. What we did and what every organization starts with is you know, we acquired a gateway. We know we're going to be, we want some of that security in there. We want the, the rate limiting, all of those good things, why we will have them. But it was, it's actually quite comfortable when we first start. You've got an API producer, you've got a consumer, and you've got a gateway in the middle. You know, it's a nice, nice little infrastructure. We can see everything that's going on. We, we, yeah, as I was saying, we've got this one customer object. It's all fine. But then the API programs get really popular, and they get popular really, really quickly. And what you start seeing is that you've got your, your US customers, your partners, your UK partners, you've got your SaaS products, you've got your third parties. Everyone wants to use these APIs. And you've got your gateway fronting all of these things. But then it gets even more complex. <laughs> we get that, that mesh. We, but yeah, we are using gateways. We're using micro gateways. We're using gateways internally. We're using it for external purposes. We're using them for many, many different things now. Uh, but we, so we're starting to lose sight of where our, our services actually are and what ser our services are doing. So it is getting more and more, uh, more complex and more and more difficult to uh, understand what, what's actually happening and who's consuming that data. Got our discovery APIs. We just don't know where we, which gateway the information is going from. Where are we going to our potential breaches? This is where sleepless nights actually fully kick in. You know, where you're you're responsible for these things, and you could potentially be exposing your organisation. Even though you've got this beautiful utopian pattern that you've got here, where you you're able to discover your APIs, etc. So what 
if your gateways could solve this for you. How do we actually, you know, what I wished and what, like, well, the people that I work with as well, the common things that we had was, why didn't we just build in the governance and the compliance at our gateways? That's the common point that we've got. Even if we're using micro gateways, we want to be able to do a consistent pattern from a security perspective on how we want to actually address our, how our data is being used. What we'd like about gateways is, we're, 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 as a company, we're not looking to be like network sniffing tools or any of those sort of things. But at the gateway, we know the data, we know the consumer, we've got a bit of information, and we can make a, a, a good decision at that point, say so whether or not that person should have access to that information. Should they be having access to the entire record set? What we're looking to do is when you've got that, that, that customer object, instead of having to create 15 of those versions of them to meet Luxembourg demands or uh, UK demands or Europe demands or US demands, why don't we just have one customer object that's easy and that we can govern? But instead of having to create multiple of these things, why don't we take out the things that you can't see? We, we are seeing more and more things around GraphQL, but yeah, as, uh, as you mentioned earlier, we, yeah, what, what pattern are you? Are you, are you a, a, a GraphQL person? Are you REST? Well, I'm REST all the way. I like contracts. I like to know what I'm getting. I need that predictability. I need that reliability. I need all of those good things when it comes to APIs. So I want to know what I'm getting at the end of it. But what we're able to do is to start in, like, still giving you information back, but making sure you're not unlawfully seeing things you shouldn't be. So here, is we, we've got a really simple pattern. We can reuse our APIs. We can create one customer object. We can create one account object. Having an API program with thousands of APIs is probably not, it, it sounds good on paper that, we, hey, look how much stuff we're churning out. From a governance perspective and a risk perspective, it's not, it's not that good. We want to be actually looking at reducing that footprint, making it reusable, maintainable, um, that, that's a big part of what we believe is just simplify that infrastructure you've got to reduce that, some of that risk. So what we do is looking at this continuous circle. We, that we know that we want to be able to, we have a fast strategy where we want to locate and identify where our information is. We want to analyze it. So we want to know what information is actually passing through our gateways. Is it PII information, so personally identifiable information? Is it material non-public information from a banking perspective? Is it healthcare information about what uh, prescriptions I've had? But it's all well and good knowing about it, but the risk is when you don't do something about it. So we as a company will look to help solve it. Immediately from just looking at it, we can start blocking information actually coming out of your APIs. But it's all well and good doing that, but we're, we're a company, we're, everyone's evolving, everyone's changing continuously. So we have to keep testing and making sure that we're continually checking what's going through our APIs, what's you know, anything new that's coming there, is there new risks that we're, we're, we're looking at now, and then trying to solve them and keep going around. So gateways are doing more and more, uh, which is what we love about them. They're doing more to help use different technologies. So like, as you said, mentioned, gRPC, we, we love gRPC, we think that, you know, it, it's going to bring a lot of different things and speed and from the financial industry as well. But if you, a big part of some of the work, we've partnered with Gravity, so we're really pleased that we're going to be going out to market as probably one of the, the first uh, gateways with privacy built into it. What we are looking to do here is apply those patterns over all of these different technologies so we can make sure that it's private, uh, but it's usable. You've got that reusability on there and we're not exposing our company to more risk. And then finally, the future, is what we're trying to do is more embedding data protection into your gateways. Cost reduction, because you're not creating multiple of these APIs, you can control it with governance. And then innovation. The more you're able, to, you can actually spend time, instead of building privacy into every single layer, you can have that same net result with having it in your gateways, but allowing your company to do things to innovate and not have to be burdened by things around privacy and data protection. So with that, if there's any questions. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions on 
Can we call them privacy gateways, API privacy gateways, or no? Pardon? Can we call them, I don't know, API privacy gateways or data protection gateways? Or You need to do both. So the whole part of it is that first protecting it. You do need to ensure that you've got that protection in there. But it's when you're accessing it, so when you're making that, that decision on whether or not you are able to see it, that's where the privacy kicks in. So actually, I haven't given you permission to see my information there. So they go hand in hand. So the way we see data protection, it's privacy and the security combined together. Yeah, I was trying to find a name, you know, like uh, around that. You can call I, it a privacy gateway. I love privacy gateways personally, but uh, you have any questions there? Yeah. I have a question on performance, you know. Sorry? On performance, does it slow? You know, gateways, we want things to be really fast. Does it change the performance? Or? So we aim to, to get it down to tens of milliseconds. So it, yeah, there's always going to be a hump in the road. But is that hump in the road worth you know, that saving that risk? You know, as we spoke about with Twitter, et cetera. It, you, if we, could, we know if we're using information for a particular purpose, we can block it, say, actually, you're using it for something that this wasn't permitted to do. So those sort of things we can help with. It is a small bump in the road, it's, but yeah, we're, we're trying to do more and more things to make it faster. But by embedding into the gateways, it will be a service that's actually embedded within there. So that latency shouldn't actually be there. So in terms of protection and compliance, what you're talking about, so you're embedding the compliance of all the different states and everything that you're looking at into the gateway. Um, what are we looking at? Some sort of a configurable service on top of the gateway, or is it something that the uh, the user or the consumer of these services would actually have to um, rely on an external uh, entity that would work on this? H how does this whole thing play out? Yeah. At, at the moment, when we're embedding in other gateways, we're a RESTful service. We're embedding in as a policy. But we're doing more and more with the gateways. Uh, um, this is some of the work that we're hoping to get out in. Uh, in the next uh, quarter is we should hope to be a drag and drop policy within a gateway. So you, it, we're trying to do more and more to be able to make it as easier to be able to apply these policies in there. But it is a configurable tool. We are a no code solution to ha providing this privacy on top of it. And with different configurations, we can do things like pseudonymization, which is one of the, the things that is called out as a protection technique within the data regulations, different types of encryption, just redaction of data, filtering of data, those sort of things, all from a no-code perspective, we're able to, uh, to apply through these drag-and-drop policies. Absolutely, yes. That's a big part of it. We started as a, a, a big part of the, the, the troubles that we had when we were in a, a corporate organization was not only were we dealing with financial data, uh, where you have different like, sensitive transactions, et cetera, we were also having to deal with employee data, um, and the burden just became more and more and more as more and more regulations came into effect. So PII is absolutely one of the big key components on how are you using that data, what are you using it for, have, has the user consented, and we can build all of that just as a policy. So we're trying, so we're trying to make it easier. Oh, oh, sorry. Go on. No, so just, just to understand, so at the gateway level, uh, if you, if you question, do you uh, check localization? Data localization. Uh, yeah, the localization of the data or the user, yeah? Yeah, absolutely, yes. Absolutely. The data retention? Data retention, we can help with. So we've got a, a part of our pseudonymization technique is to allow you to keep data for, so especially in regulated industries, you do have like seven years in certain countries. I think Canada's like, only, uh, it, you have to keep it forever. Certain other jurisdictions is 10 years. So depending on what it is, yeah, we can still keep that keys, but make sure that no one has access to it. But only from a compliance perspective can you do that. Uh, but then we've also got the ability to completely destroy that information if, if needed to be right. as well. And so maybe the, the, the question at least everyone in the privacy industry is looking for, are you able to check the purpose? Absolutely. So you do what we call just it's a term, you know, in the API space, we call it like access level management or authorization management. But the term that I discovered like purpose based access management. Yes. You know, like allowing application to access or not based on the purpose of the app, right? Yeah. So you, you do that, right? Uh, yes, because you want to be able to do absolutely the most you can with information, but by using the purpose of use, what are you using it for? You can actually say, oh yeah, for marketing, maybe you can't do certain things with it. But what we're trying to look at is as a hy hybrid. If one customer said, absolutely use my information, great, we want to do that. But if they're saying, no, we need to anonymize it, but we can give you that hybrid of, 
both. So if you've got one record set, we can filter out the ones that you, you can't, or we can anonymize certain parts of it, depending on what it is. So just to explain, for example, when you collect an email just for marketing purposes, you have to store it, store the consent, or store the... Um, uh, uh, store the consent and also uh, check the purpose, right? But so if, if a CRM application is trying to get this data without the consent of the user, so the privacy gateway or whatever, will say, no, like, look, this application is not, not following the purpose, right? Yes. Okay. It, it's a parameter that needs to be passed in because of course, it of will course. change. So one of the things that we had to do, and this is like very COVID related, um, we did an, uh, uh, some piece of work for a call center. But historically, what they'd had was uh, you know, everyone can access it from the, the call centers, but what they used to do is take their pens and papers away and the phones, and so they can't take pictures of direct debit information. But what we had to do was block that direct debit information from the screens when they're at home, because you, ha you don't want everyone having that financial information. But still using that same pattern, we were able to audit who has access to it, why are they accessing it, because there are going to be cases where somebody does need to actually access that direct debit information for uh, a confirmation or changing it or whatever it might be. So depending on what you're using it for, we can be that granular within an application as well. Yeah. Thank you very much, Sonal. Thank you, Peter. It was interesting. Thank you. Thank you.